Oh, hello there. I'm Termel. I was just cleaning out my office and I found my old diaries. I used to do quite a lot of writing in these when I was younger. My thoughts, my plans and aspirations, and a lot of stories about the adventures I went on with my best friend, Anietta. Would you like to hear one? Let's see here. From the diary of Termel Robertson. The Misadventures of Agneta DeVoe, Episode 3, The Animal People. I was given this diary as a gift last holidays, and when I received it I promised to myself I would write in it daily, making note of the events I witnessed. I'm rather disappointed in myself, however, that it has taken me five months to get around to doing that, but if any day's events are worth writing in here, it would be today's. For today I witnessed terrible things with magic the likes of which I never knew existed. In truth, the story began several weeks ago when I was out at the market with my friend Agneta DeVoe. A tall elf woman with a slender but muscular build, dark skin which she herself described as the tone of sepia, her curly black hair tied in a bun at the back of her head, and a mismatched style of dress comprising of a battered great coat, an oversized shirt, burgundy trousers and knee-high leather boots. While down the market she became friends with an elven trader named Merelda, an elf of the woods, called a Manerish, with red-brown hair, light freckled skin, wearing a green dress and with a knack for wood carving, she had faced hostility when she came to the city to sell her carved wares. And yet it quickly got to the bottom of the problem and the harassment quickly stopped, and the pair continued to bond over the next few weeks. Today had been Merelda's last day in Varadun before she returned to her Manerish clan. Having a rare day off from my job at the city council, I ventured with Agneta to see Merelda off back home. So why did you want to come along with me today? Just wanted to make sure you got home all right. Thank you, but I'm fine, really. After we took care of those brutes a few weeks ago, I've not had any trouble in the city at all. Once I get out of the city, things become a little easier. And if there's any trouble, I have my bow with me. Well, can't be too careful. That and I just wanted to get out, get some fresh air. You did spend quite a few days locked in that stuffy room of yours. Yes, and yet has a bit of a bad habit locking herself away for extended periods of time. Do I? Nearly a week you were gone one time, last year. I thought you must have gone on a trip somewhere. Even Charlotte hadn't heard from you for half a week. Well, here I am, outside, alive, fixing that problem. It's not even a problem, honest. So what do you get up to when you lock yourself away? Studying? Work? Kind of. And other things. You know how it is. I can't say I do. These last few weeks have been the longest I've ever spent indoors in my life. I can see why people might like it. There's sort of a security within the four walls and the roof, but I prefer having my walls open to the outside. Okay, that was one reason why I did want to come along today, was to see where you lived. I've never seen Manerish dwellings in person before. You may be disappointed, Anietta. I'm meeting my clan at the camp a short while from here. The only dwellings you might be seeing are tents. This hidden forest path leads us to the campsite. Why is that? If I may ask, I've always wondered about Manerish and... Ah! What? What is it? Out of the corner of my eye, I saw the shape of a man hidden under the bushes off the side of the path. And yet I carefully stepped towards it, and with her cane, moved the bushes aside to reveal a body. Ah. Good lord. Lanier Madeir! Okay, that's, that's not normal. The body wasn't normal at all. What had first appeared to be a human male was anything but. His legs were long, grown beyond the hem of his trousers, the knees bent back like a deer's, the feet were hooves. His face seemed stretched and muzzle-like, and from his forehead grew two antlers. Well, that's just weird. Weird? He's half a deer. Yeah, that's pretty weird, isn't it? There are stories of creatures not from here. Long in body, their skin made of bark with antlered heads. How do you mean, not from here? This doesn't look like one of them, though, does it? Nor the other creatures I know of. What kind of creatures are you talking about here? Well, you got fawns for starters, but they're not native to here. You have some pixies and forest nymphs with antlers, but this is something completely different. Have a look. It's like some weird blend of human and deer. But I think we're missing the point here. Whoever or whatever this is, they're dead. And not from natural causes, I bet, judging from those bruises on their throat. And they're still warm, so this was recent. Do you think the killer might still be around? Possibly, but I'm guessing that while this is where the body was hidden, they weren't killed here. Are you sure? Have you used that spirit magic of yours to trace them? No, I just took a quick look around. If you see up there into the bushes, you'll see a trailer snapped and bent over branches leading to here. You don't need magic to figure out what can be observed. Should we take a look? I was going to, so, uh, yeah. 
Merelda, I'm sorry, this is where we might have to leave you. I'm happy to come along if you want. I know this area well. Good point. Welcome aboard. Keep your voices low. Merelda, you go ahead. Termel, stay close. Covering the half-deer man back up the bushes, Agneta went off the path closely behind Merelda, following the trail of snapped branches through the undergrowth. We stuck close together. Merelda moved gracefully and without error over the uneven ground, as I slipped and stumbled, the bottom of my red coat quickly becoming soaked as it brushed through the bushes and ferns, still damp with dew. The temperature dropped and the forest became darker and quieter as the trees became more dense. Do you know how to perform spirit magic? I do. How is it that you know advanced Minerish magic, yet you know little else of the culture? I had a good teacher. Unfortunately, the only thing she really taught was magic and not much else. Pyromancy, healing, spirit, versatile combination. It all comes in handy. Can you hear that? I can. The two of them stood still. Their larger, pointed elf ears could hear voices up ahead when I could not. Merelda drew her bow, while Agneta readied her hands to cast a spell. We continued deeper, even quieter than before, and it wasn't for another few minutes before I could hear what they could. A low rumble of voices, a large crowd, one speaking over them all. Then sight, as the trees started to thin as we neared a clearing. I could make out the shapes of people, tents, a bonfire. Closer we got, more details coming into view. A stage at the far end of the clearing. The crowd of strange creatures gathered around. And on the stage, a man. Much like the half-deer we found, these people were animals. Their features transformed, with claws of big cats, the beaks and feathers of birds, and up on stage, the frightful image of a mantis man, with bulging orange eyes, his jaw transformed into insect mandibles, and two antennae sprouted from his forehead beneath a quiff of blonde hair. Sure, we may not be able to return to our societies, but societies are beneath us now, which is why I ask you all this, fellow gods. Do we share these remarkable gifts with the people? Who would see our work as aberrations, conflicting all that their minds perceive to be wrong? The sick? The needy? Do they deserve a reprieve from the cruelty? Or do they suffer for the faults of their betters? Well, let me ask you all this, my followers. Where were the gods before now? Where were they when the babe died in their crib? Or the urchin on the street starved? While murderers stalk the lanes and the politicians line their pockets with the gold of the gullible? The gods were nowhere to be seen while these injustices took place. Like a bullying older sibling, they have taught us their ways, the ways of the world. And so we continue. We are gods. The suffering of the mortals is beneath us. And I... Who the bloody hell are you? I could ask you the same thing. Sixty pairs of eyes turned to look at the three of us, all staring expressionless. Before the one on the stage ordered, Freeze them! The animal people lunged towards us. We turned and ran back to the bush as fast as we could, the animal people bearing down on us. Before there was a bright flash, the wind was knocked from my lungs, and things went black. I woke up a short while later, my limbs bound and my face pressed into the canvas floor of a tent. I sat up with some difficulty, and noticed Agneta and Merelda sat close by, their hands and feet also tied. Feeling all right? I think so. Oh, my face. Yeah, you landed on it. Got a bit of a graze on your left cheek there. Ah, uh, what's happening? Shh. Once more, my human ears failed to hear anything outside but the noise of the campsite. Yet on the other side of the clearing, the animal people were in discussion, and Agneta and Merelda managed to catch every detail. Edmund, what are you thinking? How could they find us? Given the direction they came from, they likely found Tom's body. They must have tracked us somehow. Are you saying they just found his body and followed the trail here? What did you do? Stick him on a signpost? Cassius, I've searched the books. What have you found? The only reversal I've found is beyond my knowledge. Garrus and I translated it, but it's magic that means nothing to me. What type of magic is it? Harem, Heriomancy. Of course, that could work. Got it. Toro gets Samson. He's done readings on the subject. Try to make sense of it. Once you've done that, go through our supplies. See what ingredients you can salvage. If it works, I'll pay you handsomely when I get the money. Get to it! Michael, how's the crap? Any goodwill you got from your speech is dwindling. The people are becoming unruly. The trespassers likely created the unease. Yes, Cassius. What do you want me to do with them? 
do with them? Something tells me you don't want word of this getting out. No, I don't, but right now it's the third most pressing concern of mine. What did you have in mind? I say we gut them and leave them by the roadside. Make it look like they really did stumble onto a bear in the woods. Good grief. We're not animals. Well, not entirely. <laughs> the leader, Cassius, doesn't sound too happy, does he? Not really. What's going on? They've been discussing how we might have found him and what to do with us. Seems they're drawing the line at killing us. Oh, how lovely of them. One of them has mentioned a reversal. I think this lot might have been mucking around with ancient magic. The leader said as we approached their camp that they wanted the abilities of animals, not the physical transformations. One of them mentioned a reversal. They're coming. I think some are still talking, though. Footsteps approached and the tent flap opened, entering the leader, Cassius, the mantis man, looking even more horrifying up close. Good morning. My name is Cassius. Sup? How did you come to find us? You weren't exactly quiet. Interesting speech. You sound like a really stable person. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I'm pretty handy with machines. Want me to see if I can tighten those loose screws in your head? And yet, uh, the flap opened once again and my heart skipped a beat with fright as a clothed and upright standing grizzly bear entered behind Cassius. Standing two metres tall, I realised he was another of the animal people, his eyes blue and human, and he had a curled moustache beneath his black nose. So, you were out for a walk in the woods, you heard us and decided to come and have a look? Perhaps so. Perhaps so? Cassius, there's something we need to talk about. Now, you three stay here, I'll be right back. Suddenly, I had a realisation. I think I know who he is. Who? Cassius? I think he's Cassius Herbertson. He's a magister from Josephinia. I've never met or seen him, besides he's too disfigured to properly identify, but he was a scholar of ancient magic. He's from a wealthy family, too. Okay. That's good. Thank you. I heard something, too. The bearer was talking to the others we heard earlier when Cassius entered the tent. Something about stopping the book translation? Now that's interesting. Now, I didn't catch your names. That's because we didn't say them. <laughs> well? That's an interesting look you're sporting there. Was it intentional? I'm asking the questions here. You were, but now you're just making statements. What are your names? My name's Anna. That's Benny. And your mute friend here? Cassius! What now? They're growing restless. They're not going to last much longer. Tell them to wait. Looks like you lot ran afoul of some ancient blood magic of some kind. How did you... I'm a magic scholar of sorts. I know things. Not a lot, maybe not enough, but I can identify most problems when they arise. Hmm. Impressive. Yes, you might say we ran afoul of some older, forgotten magic during our experiments, but it is by design. You mean you intended for your face to look like that? We are... Pioneering scientists and scholars, attempting to discover the secrets of the world. As such, our work is sensitive and not quite ready for the exposure and scrutiny of the general public just yet. Apologies for any distress that has been caused. My sincerest apologies, but I just want you to know that we simply can't have any word of this getting out. So I just need your promises not to tell anyone about this, and we can let you go on your way. Just like that. Just like that. Curious. It is a bit. What's curious? If you were scientists, scholars, magisters, dare I say, why were you up on that stage earlier preaching to the animal people here about how you were all gods? What you're saying now is a bit of a contradiction from what we three heard. Ha! <laughs> you must have misheard me. And here you have us all hogtied on the floor of your tent. Um, just a... Precaution. Cassius Herbertson of Josephinia, magical scholar. I think you ran afoul of some ancient blood magic. You might have been experimenting with how to acquire the natural abilities of animals, but you accidentally turned yourselves into human-animal hybrids. Something that ended up being distressing for all these people. Who are they? Fellow scientists? Test subjects? And to avoid civil unrest, because, I mean, who would really want to be a horrific human-animal hybrid, you tried to make the best of the situation by preaching to them that they were all the better for it. But naturally, people have doubts, especially after the deaths of one of them, Tom, whose body has been unceremoniously discarded in the forest like a piece of rubbish. Now, who did that then? Although Cassius's face was transformed and insectoid, the look of fear that washed over it as Anetta spoke was obvious. Seemingly put on the spot, he stammered and wrung his clawed hands, 
as Edmund the Bear entered once again. Doral needs to speak to you, Cassius. I'll watch the prisoners. You do that. This better be important. Temel, come over here a bit closer, quietly as you can. Keep your voice down. Do you think this Cassius will keep his word and let us go? Difficult to tell. Hopefully you shedding light on the fact that you know who he is and what he's done doesn't make him change his mind. Okay, he won't change his mind. That better? Something screwy is going on. Besides the talking animals? I'm with you on that one. The way they were all talking earlier, that Edmund and the deep-voiced one. They sound like they might be up to something. Exactly what I was thinking. Great minds, eh? What did you hear? Like I said a few moments ago, when one of them out there mentioned a magic reversal, Edmund seemed... Seemed like what? Well, when Cassie said the reversal could work, Edmund was all, could it? Like, you know, he didn't expect that to be possible. He was kind of like, wait, what do you mean there's a reversal? The way you're saying it with that tone of voice, it kind of sounds like he has a plan that's been foiled. That's what I was thinking. Now that's an interesting thought. Hang on, someone's coming again. Alid, Mike, keep your voices low. The prisoners are in the tent. Do you know what Gassis is going to do with them? I heard him saying he was going to let them go. That this was some new experiment he didn't want anyone knowing about. He was probably ready to pull out a non-disclosure agreement on them. But that's according to his plans of figuring out a cure. What about with our plans? It could be easier. Right now we're only guilty of killing one, two if Cassius protests the takeover. Maybe more if anyone's still loyal to him. Do you think it would be worth adding three more to that count? Well, I'd prefer not to. So we let them go. They run to the authorities, of course. But by the time anyone gets here, we'll be long gone. I used some of Cassius's money to organize transport away to the north. It's covert. Won't be comfortable. But in three days' time, we'll be free. Three days is an easy wait, considering how long we had to put up with Cassius. Where's the rest of Cassius's money? 900,000 pounds. Stashed at the bottom of my trunk. Mike, this reversal Toro mentioned. Could it actually work? Hmm. Mike knows much, but Mike does not know this. Speaking of trunks, the elephant man. Ah, yes. Hurt. Still restless then. Ha! Huh. Almost distraught. He could help in overthrowing Cassius. Here he comes. What are you three doing here? Has Toro found a cure? He has, yes. I kind of know of it. It's, it's a fairly standard blood magic reversal spell. We should be able to fix this by nightfall. Given how disastrous this has ended up, I don't think I have enough money to fund further research. And if your spell doesn't work? Your speech of living as gods still standing? It's a possibility. Find some land, live there, above everyone else, lording over all. Still a good idea. So why try to change back at all? Surely you could do another speech. Your first one did so well. You had everyone on board. Edmund, can you see my face right now? I used to be beautiful. Now my face is more pelvis than skull. I'm beginning to think you might be enjoying being a half-man, half-bear thing. Now... If we're going to let those three go, the elf women and the man, if they do tell anyone about us, by the time they get back to civilization, we'll be back to normal and out of here. They're coming in to let us go. Sorry about all this mess. You're free to go now. Kind of difficult with our hands and feet tied. Of course, I'll get your feet. That's just a simple knot. I'll undo the ropes on your wrists when we get outside in the brighter light. With a simple flick of his insect fingers... Cassius cut the ropes binding our ankles and helped us to our feet, leading us from the tent and into the clearing. Good luck with that reversal spell of yours. Heromancy can be tricky. It's a good thing you have that spell, because, like I said, who would want to be an animal-human hybrid? Seems Edmund would. Sorry? Oh, that was just... banter, you know? So what are you trying to do anyway? Get the skills and abilities of animals? Such a spell doesn't sound possible. If you want strength, you don't need Essence of Bear to do that. Memory increase? Nor do you need to cross yourself with an elephant for that. There's already potions and spells to do those things. Yes. Well, we desired slightly different outcomes. Well, you've got a whole range of spells to choose from to do that. Why you turned blood magic to do that, I have no idea. That's an incredibly dangerous and stupid thing to do. Unless you were deceived. That's one possibility. Can't be accused of deliberate stupidity there. Only accidental, I'm guessing. 
What are you all saying? Take some ancient animal transformation blood magic spell, change a few little steps and ingredients, you just turn yourself into a cross of the two. Who gave you that spell anyway? Edmund did. Edmund the bear, who seems very pleased about his transformation. Who's hidden 900,000 pounds of your money in his trunk. Who's planning to overthrow you and run off with the others who all seem very pleased to be animal people. Who killed Tom and left his body in the woods. They conned you, Cassius, to get what they wanted. Why they wanted it, I don't know just yet. If that's true, a crowd had gathered around us and a man with the face of an elephant pushed forward to the front. Cassius! Cassius, unhand me! You did this to me! You turned me into this monster! I only wanted the memory of an elephant! You... you did this to all of us! I did nothing of the sort! Years my memory has been failing me! Years you wrote me along with your grand games of fixing this! And this is what you do to me! I won't be forgetting this, will I? Now listen, all of you! It was a minor miscalculation! I didn't intend for this, why would I? It's an honest mistake, and I can fix it. Honest. We have the ability to change us back. Edmund said you lied, and you're lying now. If everyone can just be quiet, I have the solution. I'm not the enemy here. I am your savior. Edmund the bear and his followers advanced towards Cassius, swords and clubs raised. Cassius, come out to play. Do not try to deceive them any further. You failed, Cassius. Your lies are unraveling. It is not that I lie, Edmund Treadwell. It is that you have deceived these people, that have deceived all of us. You have stolen our money, haven't you, Edmund? Used it to further your own agenda, then run off and leave us all behind. You that found that blood spell to satisfy that stupid fantasy of yours to live as a bear. I've had enough of you, Cassius. You've ordered me around for the last time. I'll fight you all. To Mel, Lorelda, give me your hands. Stay close, to Mel. Times like these, you could do with a sword. I don't want a sword. Then stay behind me and keep down. Lorelda's bow was drawn once more, letting off arrows as we darted across the clearing. How many arrows you got there? Fifteen. We're trying to find our way out. Fifty violent animal people here, and I'll shoot fifteen of them. A wolf man got close, but she was quicker. Once he was down, she pulled the arrow from him and drew it once more. Now I can shoot another one. And that's when I saw, across the clearing, Edmund the bear, barreling towards us. Henrietta, Edmund's coming! Behind you! He raised his claws, ready to strike and tear us to pieces, before a hail of arrows shot out of the trees and it collapsed to the ground. The clearing was surrounded by elves wearing green, who quickly incapacitated the remaining yeah, animal down. people. Wow, okay. Meralda! Meralda! Are you alright? Lindair? Denard, I'm glad to see you. What are you doing here? How did you find us? We could hear the noise from miles. With everyone coming back home today, we were worried and come out of luck. Good thing we did. These creatures were pretty violent. Who were these two? They're them. just some friends I met in Varadun. Oh, no, no. And Yara and Tormel. I had some problems when I got to town and they helped me out a lot. Brineo Elwela. Thank you for looking after her. Stay there. I didn't so know if we'd send her to hell or not. She helped look after us just now. Yeah, Marilda did good. What happened here? Um, magic nut bags, screwing around with nature, blood magic. Is that one over there all right? Cassius, he's alive. I just wanted to help. This isn't what I wanted. Is that a crime? Blood magic is a bit of a crime, so yeah. Edmund the bear is still breathing too. Seems the poisoned arrows only knocked him out. We'll restrain him and the others. Marion will send a bird to your authorities. I presume your people would want to do something with them? Yeah, lots. On Landaya's orders, the remaining animal people were assembled and restrained in the middle of the clearing. As a message was sent by bird to the Varadun city guard, it was time for Merelda and the other elves to leave. I want to thank you, both of you and Charlotte back at the tavern for looking after me. It was no trouble at all. For many people it is. It's unfortunate. I'm glad I met you three. We need more like you, just not the whole locking people in fridges part. I have to go now, but I hope we can meet again sometime. I haven't really got an address I can get post sent to, but I can get a hawk to you whenever. I look forward to that. And Marauder, your carving work is amazing. Keep that up. You travel safely, eh? You too. Goodbye. 
Anyetta stood and watched the elves leave for as long as she could before they disappeared completely into the forest. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm good. Wiping her face, she turned to look over the animal people tied up in the middle of the camp. Right, this lot. Should we wait for the city guards to come or leave them to it? Don't leave me here. I'm not the villain. I say we leave them. Good plan. Ta-ta. The Misadventures of Agneta DeVoe, written by Royce Pentagast. Starring Olivia Brzezinski as Agneta, Holly Gregg as Merelda, Matt Harris as Cassius, Aaron Beck as Edmund, Jake T. Hodgetts as Allard, Joshua Law as Hurt, Stuart Fulton as Toro, and Royce Pentagast as Termel. Theme music copyright of Matt Harris. Additional music by Kevin Cloud of Incompetech.com. Produced by Rabbit Dog 008 and Launceston City Park Radio 2017.